Hi guys and welcome to Church at Home, our online service. We are so glad that you've been able to join us this morning and if you are new and joining us for the first time, then after the service, why don't you head over to our website www.bravechurch.co.uk. There you will be able to find out so much more information about us and you will be able to fill in a connection form. This will help us to connect with you better. If you are new to faith or maybe you've joined us online and are just starting out on your journey of discovery, then Alpha is for you. We are starting a brand new course Thursday nights online on April the 22nd. We would love for you to sign up and join that. To do that, all you have to do is send us an email to hello at bravechurch.co.uk. We would love to see you online. You know, for the rest of us, why don't we check out the rest of the service together? We're really excited to announce that we're going to be running our very first Emotionally Healthy Spirituality course at the beginning of May. This is an incredible course. It gives us an opportunity to look at two big biblical truths, really, that are often missed out of modern day discipleship. We're going to be looking at emotional maturity and what that means, because often what we do is we come into church and we kind of leave our emotions at the door. We go through all the spiritual motions and then we go back out of church and live our lives. And actually the two need to be intertwined and we're going to look at how that happens. We're also going to look at how we need to live a more slowed down pace of Christianity and what that looks like and how we can do that. This is going to be a great course. This is really going to impact our lives and transform the way that we live our Christianity out. Now then, we're so looking forward to doing this course. Uh, both myself and Sus will be involved with the course and other leaders. It's going to be, like Sus said, eight weeks on a Tuesday evening for around about an hour. There'll be discussion before and after. Social distancing rules obviously will be applied and all those kind of restrictions that we have to do going forward. So don't need to worry about those. Um, it is a free course. And everybody likes a bargain, so come on guys, do sign up. This will be, for many people, this could be a life-changing experience. And we're not exaggerating that, we genuinely believe that for some people this could be breakthrough. So please do sign up. All you do is email us at hello at bravechurch.co.uk and uh, we'll take the details from there and we'll be in touch with you. all about how Jesus returned to heaven. It's going to be great, so make sure you pay attention to the video. For Jesus to go to heaven. He led his disciples to the top of a mountain near Jerusalem. Here's what I want you to do, he said. Wait in Jerusalem until you receive the <gasps> promised Holy Spirit. <sighs> then tell everyone about me. Go from Jerusalem to Judea to Samaria, and then to the rest of the world. Make many disciples. Baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Teach them everything you learned from me. I will always be with you. When he had said this, Jesus rose into the sky. Up he went until he disappeared into a cloud. His disciples watched him. They stood there, staring into the sky. Two men dressed in white appeared. Jesus has gone to heaven, they explained. He will come back in the same way. So the disciples obeyed Jesus and went to Jerusalem. enjoyed that video but I also hope you're paying attention because now it's time for the questions so I'm gonna ask Elise the questions but I'm also asking you guys if you know the answer as well you ready I'm ready question number one what were the last two things that Jesus said I think it was to tell everybody about me 
and that I will always be with you. Yeah, that's right. Well done. Question number two. What did the two angels tell the disciples about Jesus? Well, I think it was that he will come back in the same way. Yeah, that's absolutely right. Well done if you got those right as well. We are never alone because God's Holy Spirit lives inside us. And while we wait for Jesus to return to earth, it's so important for us to share his good news with those around us. Jesus, no, Jesus has been taken from in, you, from into, you heaven. into heaven. But, but someday, someday he will return from heaven, heaven in the same way that you saw him go. Point up. But someday, someday, are we doing both fingers or one? But both. someday, I think he both will because I've already got my hands but in your someday, grip. <laughs> but someday, he will return. Wait, are we doing someday, a pause? Someday, <laughs> someday. <laughs> That's actually bad. <laughs> we'll return from no, heaven. No, but what? someday. Oh, he will whoa. return. He, but someday, no. But someday. No, because it's he. he from you into heaven. Taken from but you. So, oh, mm. right. <laughs> let me try. Let me try. We'll return from heaven. But someday he. But someday he. Will return in the same way. From heaven. From heaven. <laughs> from heaven. In the same way. From heaven. Now it's time for our memory verse. So I'm going to do the actions, then Elise is going to copy, and I want you guys to copy Elise. Jesus. Jesus. Has been taken from you to heaven. Has been taken from you to heaven. But someday he. But someday he. Will return from heaven. Will return from heaven. In the same way you saw him go. In the same way you saw him go. Acts 1 verse 11. Acts 1 verse 11. That was awesome. Let's try it all together. Let's try it. Jesus has been taken from you into heaven, but someday he will return from heaven in the same way you saw him go. Acts 1 verse 11. Elise is just going to pray for us, so why don't you raise your hands and close your eyes. Dear God, I am thankful to be part of your big story. Help me to share Jesus with others so that they can know your love too. Amen. Amen. Today we've learned all about the importance of sharing God's good news with others. So guys, why don't you try and find someone to share that with this week? Bye. Bye.
Hey, and good morning again. Welcome to um, another week, Church at Home. In fact, we're live in the building next week, so I'm excited about that as well. We're going to be online also, so don't worry about that. But we are so excited about all that God's doing in us and through us as a church in this season, and uh, excited to be on the journey with you. Um, we're going to jump into a new series today called Better Call Saul. Better Call Saul. And it's not related to the spin-off of Breaking Bad. It's not even related to the New Testament Saul, who obviously became the Apostle Paul. This is about Saul, the first king of Israel. And we're going to delve into Saul's life over the next couple of weeks. And we're going to, we're going to really examine just him as a person. And I think most of us can relate to Saul because he's, he's someone with a lot of stuff to deal with. A lot of stuff to deal with. Before we do that, let's pray. God, we thank you for your goodness and grace. We declare afresh today that this is not, we have not come and gathered together to be entertained today or to feel good. We want to meet you. And so we ask, Holy Spirit, wherever we're watching from, whatever's going on in our world, we pray, Holy Spirit, meet us here. Um, we pray, let us hear from you. As we look into your word, let us hear from you. Lead us, guide us, direct us, challenge us, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Better call Saul. I've called it that because Saul is the first king of Israel, obviously. And he, in the story that we are going to drop into in just a moment in 1 Samuel chapter 9, he's on a journey looking for one thing, but he gets something else completely. And he, he thinks he's, he knows what he wants. But God really knows what the, what the score is and what's going on. And I think that's the, the reality for each and every one of us, our, our lives. We think our plan, our dream, our, our, the thing that we're searching for is the real answer. But actually God, his way is always better. His call is always better. I remember when I was little talking about things that um, you found that you weren't expecting. I remember we'd sit around the table as a family and we would uh, we'd be eating our food. And every now and then, not a regular occurrence, but every now and then, one of us would find a hair, mum's hair, in our food. Don't know if you've ever done this. And, and you pick it out. Or worse, even worse than that, and it's going to gross some of you out, if you'd already taken a bite and put it in your mouth and you just felt it flapping around and you pull it out, wouldn't you? And um, because it was mum's, mum always had, always had long hair, that literally you could be pulling that out for a long period of time and it could be covered in stuff. And you'd say, oh, mum. There's a hair in my food. There's a hair in my food. And here's what my mum would always say. She'd always jibe back and say, uh, oh, don't tell everyone because everyone might want one. And uh, as a kid, you're like thinking about that going, why would everyone, why would everyone want a hair in their food? Don't tell everyone because everyone will want one. I remember as, um, you know, in those later years, um, when Rachel was pregnant with our second child, Phoebe, I remember just being convinced we were having a, a boy. We already had Seth. I was convinced we were going to have a second boy. I'd, I'd just convinced myself we were having a second boy. No reason, no rhyme, just convinced myself. I was sure. And I remember going into the scan and them saying, yeah, it's a girl. I remember being shocked. My wife, Rachel, will say that um, when she looked at me, um, she could literally see the shock on my face. She's still teasing me about it today that it took me a week to recover, to get my head round, um, just, just the discovery that I was going to have a girl rather than a boy. Phoebe, if you're watching this in 10 years time or whatever, uh, don't worry, dad loves you and you'll always be my special girl. You'll always be my favorite girl. And I am so glad God gave me the gift of a girl, but I was just not expecting it. And when we journey into the story in 1 Samuel chapter 9, it's a story of how it starts. It sets off is, is where Saul is introduced to us. His dad has um, uh, lost some donkeys, like you do. No, we've all been there. We've all lost donkeys in life. And uh, actually, as we go on today, we're going to find out what those do donkeys can, the, those donkeys can represent a number of things that we might be searching for. But uh, and people in those days, you know, they owned livestock. And, and so they all, I would love to live on a farm, by the way. I'd love to own my own livestock and raise my own livestock. And, um, maybe in a few years time, um, I'll be able to do that. I don't know. But, um, but that's what they've done. They've lost these donkeys. And so Saul 
and one of the servants of Saul's father's household set out on a journey to find these donkeys, only to find that they can't find the donkeys and uh, they don't know where they are. They don't know what's going on and they don't know where to find them. And so they decide to themselves, they have a light bulb moment and they say, here's what we're going to do. We're going to go find a prophet, a seer, someone who has a relationship with God, who can hear God on our behalf, which is, we're going to talk about that as well today, who can hear God on our behalf and they might direct us to these donkeys. And so they go to Samuel, the prophet of the day, to ask him if he knows where these donkeys are. Can you, it's like Samuel, can you ask God uh, if he knows where our donkeys are so that we can then find, it's like, it's such a complex, weird little story. But actually, um, God cares about the details of our lives. He does. But God is much more interested in destiny. And Saul goes looking for donkeys and asking of Samuel, where are the donkeys? But God has something else in store. And this is what he has in store in verse 15 of 1 Samuel chapter 9. It says, now the day before Saul came, the Lord had revealed this to Samuel. So before Saul showed up asking where the donkeys were, Saul showed the, uh, God showed this to Samuel. He says in verse 16, about this time tomorrow, I will send you a man from the land of Benjamin. Anoint him ruler over my people Israel. He will deliver them from the hand of the Philistines. I have looked on my people for their cry has reached me. So Israel are crying out to God. They want a king like everybody else, every other nation. And Saul, who's looking for donkeys, is going to be that king. Now, Saul didn't wake up in that morning expecting to be king. Saul didn't plan for this. Saul didn't prepare for this. He has his own goal. He has his own idea of what his his day consists of. And this is about to wreck it. It tells us that Saul says, when he finds out that he's going to be the one who's king, it says, Saul answered, verse 21, but am I not a Benjamite from the smallest tribe of Israel and is not my clan the least of all the clans of the tribe of Benjamin? Why would you say such a thing to me? So this is off the wall for Saul. And uh, this is just out of, of what he planned and prepared and what he thought and what he thought his, his day should consist of. And then God drops it in a little bit of destiny, sprinkles a little bit of destiny over your life. I don't know if you've ever done that, whether you felt like you had life mapped out. This is what I'll do. This is where I'll go. This is what is ha- going to happen. And then all of a sudden, God just sprinkles a little bit of destiny and completely reorchestrates the direction of your life. Happens has happened to me several times. And then here's what Samuel does. It says in 1 Samuel chapter 10, verse 1, it says, Then Samuel took the flask of olive oil and he poured it over Saul's head and he kissed him saying, Has not the Lord anointed you ruler over his inheritance? He, he's looking for donkeys and then he finds himself anointed king. And it says, this is symbolic, you know, in the life of Israel, they would always anoint a king who was stepping into office and they would pour the oil over the head, it would run down their body, which symbolized God covering their whole being. That no longer is this just about you bringing your best and you doing your best and you being brilliant and you having great ideas and you being really creative and you being a great leader. But now it symbolized you're covered by God. God covers you. You are not doing this on your own, which is a real encouragement. Whatever you step into as a follower of God, God will call purpose and equip you. He will cover you. When you try and do it in your own strength, it'll drain you. But when you're doing it under the anointing of God, the covering of God, it will energize you. You might be tired, but it'll be energizing. It'll be purposeful. It'll be what you were created for. So Saul has has this start to his kingship. Now, in, I'm not going to you know entirely spoil the story for you, but there are a few spoilers here. If you've never heard the story of Saul before, His kingship doesn't end well. He leads in Israel as the first king for 42 years. And it tells us towards the end of his kingship, and he ends up getting really paranoid. And we're going to look on next week about how his own insecurity led to some dysfunction in his life. And I think we can all relate to that because we're all insecure in different ways. And if we're not careful, it'll rob us of enjoying the fullness of what God has called us for and called us too, and that's what happens for Saul. But when he first became king, he was called by God. And I want to just pick out three things 
from that, that little uh, opening chapter in 1 Samuel chapter 9 that I think we can learn from. The first thing is this, is sometimes God will use the questions you're asking to lead you to a greater answer. Sometimes God will use the questions that you're asking to lead you to a greater answer. What do I mean by that? Well, it tells us in the story when Saul and his servant have this conversation that they're going to go and see Samuel. They say that they're going to ask him this question. Let's go and ask him where the donkeys are. Let's go and ask him where the donkeys are. That's the question they're asking. But God gives them through Samuel an answer to a greater question. Where are the donkeys is a lesser question. You are the answer to Israel's prayers and I am anointing you king is a greater answer. They were asking a lesser question and they got a greater answer. And sometimes God will use the lesser questions that we ask in life to lead us to greater answers to from better questions. So what could the donkeys represent? You know, the donkeys in the story are what Saul and Samuel are searching for, but we could be trying to find ourselves. Have you ever done that in life? I just need to find myself. And I say that's a lesser question. Find your creator. But finding yourself, that's a good start. It's a lesser question. It starts, the discovery of God starts with the discovery of, of who you are and what you lack and your frailty and your insecurity and your shortcomings and your weakness always lead you to a place of thinking there must be something more than this. I cannot be my own God, surely, because I'm so deficient in so many different ways. Maybe you're trying to find yourself and God will use that to take you to, to a place of discovery. Maybe you're trying to find what's next. What's next? What do I do next? I'd say that's a lesser question. I think when you find out who you are, then you'll walk into what's next. But sometimes God will, will use a lesser question. Who, what, what, what's next? And he'll lead us into a greater answer. This is what you were made for. This is how I created you. These are the passions I gave you, the abilities I gave you, the gifts that I gave you, the anointing that I want to, to, to flow over your life to you to walk into. What's next can sometimes lead you to a greater answer. I'm trying to find a wife or a husband. That's what you could be trying to find. That could be the donkey you're trying to find. Not that I'm calling your wife or your husband a donkey. Sorry. Uh, that could be the thing that you're looking for. Not that I'm calling him a thing either. This is not getting any better. Sorry. This morning. Uh, you, you could be looking for a partner. Let's just say this. And, and, and you could be looking. I need, I need to find a wife or a husband to complete me. That's a lesser question. That's a lesser search. I'm searching for who could be my, my husband or my wife because they'll complete me. They'll never complete you. They'll never complete you. But together you could combine to be a force of, of nature for the, for the kingdom of God and you could flow in your gifts and complement each other. That is a greater answer than the answer you're searching for for your lesser question. I'm looking for a new course. I'm trying to find a new course. I'm trying to find a, a, a new church. I'm trying to find a church. Well, I'm going to look for somewhere you can, you can express and be encouraged and grow. I'm trying to find answers. I'm trying to find reasons. Why am I wired like this? Why do I think like this? Why am I, why am I got these deficiencies and weaknesses? All those, they're not bad questions, but they're lesser questions. And what God wants to do is reveal greater answers of what He's purposed you for and called you for in life and how He made you and how you're wired and how He wants you to flourish and to be the person that He always intended you to be. Sometimes God has to get us moving looking for things that really we don't need because we're always looking for things that, that are about the immediate need, aren't they? That's what the, don the donkeys are lost. It's an immediate need. We need to find them immediately. And we do that. 
This is a deficiency. This is a lack in my life. I need to find a solution straight away. Straight away. And here's what God does. God orchestrates something in the background to lead you to a place when you're asking your lesser question that he's already spoken to Samuel over here. And Samuel's going to be at that same place. And you're going to encounter God here as you're searching for an answer for where's the donkeys. You're going to find out that God's graced you for so much more. God's hands on your life and he wants to use you to accomplish his purpose. Anyway, I'm getting a bit sidetracked and getting a bit too preachy, so I'll settle down a little bit. And point number two is this. Sometimes we need help here in heaven. Sometimes we need help here in heaven. See, Saul and his servant can't hear from God themselves. They, they, they don't have that ability. So here's what they, here's what they decide. We're going to go to Samuel, who's the seer of the prophet, and he's going to tell us, he's going to hear from heaven for us. Now I know when you flip forward into the New Testament, I know the Spirit of God's been poured out on all flesh. I know we can hear God for ourselves. I know we're part of the priesthood of all believers. I know that. I'm aware of that. But here's what I also know. Sometimes I need help hearing from heaven because my, the, the voices and, and, and the, the noise and the disturbance is just so great and I'm just so distracted and unsettled and I'm not in a, in a great place. I know that you, you get there as well. And I need someone's help just deciphering what should I do? And the best decision that Saul and the servant make in the story is to go and see Samuel because Samuel is going to help them, not just give them the answers that they think they need, but he's going to help them hear from heaven. You see, that's what someone who's been on the journey a while or you can trust or is in the scriptures and praying constantly it does. When, when you come and speak to them, they're not going to just tell you what you want to hear. And that's why sometimes, let's be honest, that's why we don't ask them. <laughs> Because we don't want, we don't want it to contradict what we want to hear. Just tell me where the don't, no, Samuel, just tell me where the donkeys are. Stop trying to anoint me, king. Get the oil off my head. Just tell me where the don't, let me go back to living my small, minute life that I've planned out. And I've orchestrated. And sometimes you need a Samuel in your life who'll come alongside. I know I've got, I've got a few who I can ring and just say, what do you think? Will you pray for me? And by the way, I'm not talking about like earthly wisdom that masquerades itself as, as spiritual like direction. No, no, no. I, I've been there. I've done that. I've heard it. I've given it, you know, oh, well, it's, it's like earthly wisdom that's wrapped up. And, and we package it as, oh, that's, that seems godly. No, we want to hear from heaven. We don't want to know what the new book said or the new podcast said or your latest idea is or what they said or they did. I want to hear from heaven. And sometimes you need help hearing from heaven. And when they went to Samuel, their path and God's plan collided. And that's what happens when you invite other people in. You set yourself up for a divine collision. I want to hear from heaven. I want a word to stand on. I know you're going to pray yourself. Pray yourself. Read your Bible yourself. Yeah, great. That's awesome. But sometimes you just need someone. I've got a few people who will send me messages sometimes who know nothing about what I'm praying about. And they're just, it's direct. And the word of God's so real. And it gives me, it lifts me. And, I've, and I need help. I need help. Hearing from heaven. I know you need help hearing from heaven. Why not ask someone? Why not ask someone? And as they come to ask someone, God's already spoken and he lines it up into a just so happened. It just so happened. Saul was at the right place. It just so happened. God has spoke to Samuel. Have you ever had those just so happened moments? In my life, when I look back, it just so happened at 17 years old. I couldn't stay in my, in my, in my home any longer. And I went and moved in with my, my brother-in-law and my sister in Dartford, Kent. And it just so happened that they were Christians. And it just so happened they were a part of a church. And it just so happened that they invited me to church on Sunday. And it just so happened that that Sunday, that first Sunday, I gave my life to Jesus. And I encountered the presence and the power of God for myself. It just so happened that later on I'd moved back up north. It just so happened that I went to a church because I was looking for a church. And I walked into a church. And in that church was my future in that church. God didn't tell me to go to that church. I just went to that church. And my future was wrapped up in that church. My wife was in that church. In a weird way, my kids were in that church because they were the seed of the love 
that birthed in, in, and, and came to fruition and grew in me and my wife. God knew that. God knew that as an, an 18 year old boy walking into a church where he didn't know anyone. God knew that. God knew that same church would be the church that I'm involved in now. Just so happened. You'll have had it too. I know our church is full of just so happened moments where you just happened to meet someone who was a Christian and it just so happened that they told you their story and it just so happened that you encountered God for yourself, that you prayed a prayer, that you encountered his presence and you're now moving forward with him. It just so happened you met your husband or your wife or your future was unlocked. It just so happened that God gave you a dream and then gave you a connection with someone who would help make your dream. I know that it's, we're full of them as a church. We're full of just so happens because when our plan, when we see seek help when we ask God will line things up if the trajectory of our life is to seek help and seek guidance and gain wisdom God will line some things up and the third thing is this then we're going to finish is destiny is not out there it's in here really quickly Samuel says Saul I'll tell you everything that's in your heart I'll tell you everything that's in your heart. In other words, the king, the ruler that Israel needed were already wrapped up in Saul on the inside. Saul didn't see it. And, and, and his in all insecurity robbed him of it, the enjoyment of it. But it was in him. I'll tell you everything that's in your heart. Sometimes we're looking for destiny out there. It's in here. Get to know what God's put in you. How he's wired you. That's what we want. Destiny is in here. How's he wired me? Sometimes you've got to restore yourself to factory settings and get rid of the clutter and back to the place of primacy with God where you just get alone with him. Open the word. Pray. And ask him to speak to you. Um, a few weeks ago, this is an old laptop now that I've got. And it's just getting cloggy and slow. And uh, so I decided I was going to clear it out put all the stuff I didn't need in the bin and, uh, and I was going to restore it to factory settings. And when I restored it to factory settings, went through the process, the speed was there. Sometimes, you know, we can get clunky in our relationship with God. We can get clunky because we're looking out there. We're looking at their opinion, what they should do. We're thinking about planning out things of ourselves and how orchestrating things and, and getting it all lined up. Like we're the ones, and I'm not saying we don't need to be proactive. I'm not saying God hasn't given us common sense. I know those things, but here's what we need. We need to know that God is on the at work on the inside of us. And it's not out there. It's not in climbing a ladder. It's not in finding a position ourselves. It's not in being lifted up. It's not in trying to get in through a door. It's not trying to grab out of an opportunity. Destiny is found in here. That when you're comfortable and confident with who God's created you to be, wherever you go, whatever you do, you'll find destiny in your path. You won't have to search for it and seek it, you'll find it. You don't believe me? Think about the story of Abraham and Lot. When the families become too big and they have to separate, what does Abraham say to Lot? Lot, you choose. You choose. Look over the land. You choose. You go right or you go left. That's your right, isn't it? That's your left. But you choose which way you'll go. You choose. And he lets him pick because Abraham knows he's secure in who God's called him to be. Because he knows destiny is not out there. Destiny is in here. It's who God's called me to be. So wherever you choose, wherever you go, I know I can go the opposite way and it'll be all right. Because God is with me. Destiny is in here. It's not out there. I hope that helps someone today I know it helps me that I can tune in afresh rather than thinking I've got to make something of myself that I can just be comfortable and content with who God's called me to be and trust that God will take care of the rest what a powerful story the soul's looking for destiny he's looking for sorry donkeys but he finds his destiny and his destiny was not out there it was in here all the time to tune into the work of God on the inside of you. Let God use your lesser questions to lead you to greater answers. And ask, if you're struggling to hear from God, ask someone, pray with me, pray for me, walk with me. Let's pray together. God, we thank you for your word. I pray that you would use my fumbling and 
um, lack today. And I pray that your Holy Spirit, you would enliven something for someone that it would hit home, ring true, and that you would bring fruit from it in our lives. God, we want to be more like you. Thank you that you've given us the stories of old that we see ourselves in and that God relate to us humanity and your work in us and what you've got for us. I pray for my brothers and sisters today. I pray for a fresh touch of you in our lives. Let us know you and let us walk in obedience to what you have for us as we journey forward in life. God, I pray you'd give us awareness of who you've made us to be, that we could rest in that place, secure, content, confident, that God, you made us and you're working your plan out through our lives. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Looking forward to seeing you next week, both live in the building and online. See you soon, guys. Take care. What a great message by Sam this morning. Three great points for us to reflect on. And you know, at this point in the service, we love to give people the opportunity to say yes to Jesus for the first time. If that is you today, then why don't you join me in prayer now? Dear Lord Jesus, I acknowledge I need a saviour. I confess today that you are the Son of God and the Lord of all. I ask that you would forgive me of my wrongdoing. I know you died on the cross for my sin and you rose again so that we could have victory and freedom. I now give you my life. Help me to follow you and experience you in my days. I trust in you. Amen. Hey, if you have said that prayer today, then why not give us a message and tell us and fill in a response form. We would love to pray with you as you start off on this incredible journey. You know, don't forget guys as well that you can follow us on Instagram, you can like our Facebook page and you can also subscribe to our YouTube channel. Hey, have a great week guys and we will see you again soon.